In the last video, we built a high performance Briggs & Stratton five horsepower engine from a box of used parts. So since we have a vintage engine built, we figured we'd put it on a vintage mini bike. So Ike, this mini bike is new to cars and cameras. Tell us about it, dude. Uh, I bought it like close to a year ago from a fan. I have no idea how much I paid for it. I think I paid a hundred dollars for it. And it's been kind of stowed away in the garage for just this moment. So here it is. But old simple mini bikes like this are really popular right now. So we are going to restore this one and put a vintage engine on it. Hopefully make it like a period correct restored vintage mini bike. So like a lot of other vintage projects, this bike's had its fair share of riggery. The exhaust is galvanized pipe. The foot pegs are a copper pipe with hose on top of it. And one of the motor bolts is just like a wire that's been twisted together. Anyway, we're planning on fixing all the rig stuff here and to bring it back to its former glory. So we have a three horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine on it. We're gonna get rid of it and put our high horse, five horse on it. We need to make sure it fits. Just for the heck of it, let's see if the engine's stuck. Hey. It's not. It's not, and it sounded like it had a little compression. I know. It. Got a little gasoline here. Oh, a little bit of leakage. A lot of leakage. Oh, wow. Dude, engine's mint. All right, let's take this thing off. This thing's only two bolted. That's impressive. Oh, it sure is. <laughs> That's electrical <laughs> wire, dude. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Somebody's parents are upset that they're their missing uh, some outlet quit working. Oh no! They, did they? They even drilled a hole, I think. Yeah, right? yeah, they did on the front. So that was too. a permanent fix, in other words. Yeah, there was no adjustment. Oh, you got it. Oh, this thing's so light. That's that's ground wire, dude. <laughs> Put the thing on a skateboard. All right. Let's set the. Uh... Yeah, let's make sure it fits. Yeah, it fits really nice in man. We're gonna go ahead and bolt up the five horse just for a few minutes, just so we can kind of break it in a little bit more. Well, we, sh we should probably set it up and make sure everything fits, fits properly. Before yeah. Before doing all the paint work and everything. Right. Hey, this thing is nice. Yeah. So before you guys give me a hard time for saying I don't like Briggs, let me just clarify that it's not that I don't like Briggs, it's just I really do want to like them. It's just every time I've ever worked on them, they've always been smoky, underpowered, and just working on them is a pain because everything is just worn out, frozen, stuck, broken. So this is pretty interesting. We have foot pegs made out of a copper pipe and two pieces of hose. It's actually starting to look a little bit like Lady Liberty. It's uh, turning a little bit green. Definitely different. Self-tapping wood screws. I was wondering what they had going on under here. There it goes. So the engine, the front and rear wheels, and the seat are off. Not gonna worry about the front forks or anything, gonna leave them right there. I'm gonna hit this with a scuff pad in a minute, but first, I'm gonna see how the brakes are looking, or just the one brake, the drum. Eh, I could clean it up, but it looks like there's honestly some life left on the uh, shoes there. How's the bearing, though? 
Not great, if I'm honest. <laughs> Not great at all. That one's even worse. It'll be fine. So we have the handle grips taped off. The old tires hold air, believe it or not. And Ike is just working on the fenders here. They had some tape on them and uh, just trying to get all the gunk off. So once we uh, do that, we can throw some paint on it. So that fender is almost ready to go. The wheels are taped off and they're ready. And the frame's ready too. We're having a cold, rainy day. So of course we're painting. Uh, so. I just have cardboard on the floor. We're gonna open the door and just spray that direction. It'll be fine. Yeah, I see it, it's all coming inside. It's pretty early in the day. There's a lot we have planned to do today and we don't need to sit in here and breathe paint fumes for six hours. So we're loading up all the mini bike parts and gonna do some painting at Ike's warehouse. So we'll see you there. All right, since we're not priming the frame, I would suggest that we do a light coat at first and just let the paint tack. Yep. That's kind of heavy. Yep, it's kind of heavy. There I go again. I'll leave the other fender for you. Thanks. And I'll, I'll do the front. Go for it, for it. Just, okay. just paint it. That looks good. I don't know about that paint, dude. It looks kind of funny. It's a good thing it's going underneath. Yep. Here's a pro tip. If you're doing any painting at all, you need one of these things. A dust mask is not going to do. Ike is killing his lungs right now. I'm holding my breath. Man, you can even see a reflection in it. You already got your finger, fender? Yep. Let's go. Let's get out of here. So about a day has gone by since we let, ooh, put another coat of clear coat on the bike and dude, that looks good. Oh, you trying to figure out whose looks better? Yeah, mine looks better. Classic, dude. The wheels turned out pretty good too. Not as good as the frame, but It'll be fine. I think it really needs some clear coat for some pop. Yeah. Everything is loaded up in the back of the truck. We will see you back at the house. I painted the engine block and the head. It's looking super nice. And uh, we also ran to the hardware store. They were having a sale and I just I had to ball out on a new, uh, a new tool chest. Um, but we have the bike sitting on top of it and we're gonna tackle the seat now. So we went to the local superstore and actually found a lot of options for different covering materials check them out so there are just three types of faux brown leather i guess and then for a pad we actually got a camping like sleeping pad because all the foam was uh too soft yeah on the left we have faux alligator skin in the middle we have faux perforated leather and on the right we have just brown dark brown leather faux leather that's the original board it's a little small, but honestly, it might be okay. It might be about right. Yeah, I think you're right. So I just posted on Instagram. You can follow me at Cars and Cameras Reviews to ask you guys which material we can go with because we can't choose. Anyway, let's start stacking our padding. 
So I traced out the board on this pad and I've got three layers of padding here. I just need to cut it out. All right. What do you think? Oh, that's, dude, that's perfect. Oh, that's cool looking. <laughs> Never seen that before. Looks like spider webs. Yeah. We had to wait about five minutes to let the glue tack up a little bit, but now we should be able to join it. Did they make an applicator yeah. for that, or is it just... It's basically just... You just get sticky. Yeah. Just kind of round things off. We are still waiting on results from our upholstery pole, so we are going to start assembly, right? Yeah, buddy. And it looks so nice. Sure does. So front fender, front wheel first, then the rear. So Ike's still working on that rear wheel. And I reassembled the engine, and it looks good. We're going with the alligator skin looking one. That was like 71 votes uh, to 21 votes for the perforated leather and like 36 for the dark brown leather. I'm down with the alligator skin looking one, so let's do it. A little, let's see if I can. Stable gun. It looks pretty good, man. It's all right. I mean, there are a couple of wrinkles in it, but dude, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, that looks pretty good, man. Let's see. It was a comfortable though. That's the question. Yeah, it's not too bad. Do it. Looks good. Yep. Let's see how long it'll last. Time for the engine, right, buddy? Yes, sir. Let's do it. So we decided to bungee cord a water bottle to the seat to uh, press down on that little ramp we have so the adhesive will uh, stick. So the engine's on, the rear wheel's on. We're kind of doing final assembly now. Uh, we have a clutch here from GoPowerSports.com. It's for a 35 chain. It'll go right on this three-quarter shaft, very reasonably priced. You can find one at a link in our description and uh, it should line up with the rear axle the way this uh, engine mount is. And we also have this nifty chain brake. All right, one of my least favorite things about go-karts, mini bikes, power sports stuff is like chains. They're usually a pain to cut to length. Well, Go Power Sports also sent us this nice little chain brake just for 35 chain. Uh, it's a piece of cake to use and it takes all the fuss out of chains. That should do it. We should have plenty of adjustment. You always want to make sure the closed part of the clip is facing the rotation of the chain, if that makes sense. We still need a fuel tank, we need brake linkage, and we need throttle linkage. Then we'll be ready for a ride. We're in the home stretch. So we have been scrambling to get this bike done by the end of the day. Check it out. It's looking pretty good. Uh, we added a spun al aluminum fuel tank from GoPowerSports.com. You can find one at the uh, link in our description. And uh, Ike's working on brake linkage. We're gonna do a foot brake on this setup and we'll show you more in a second. So Ike's just threading on the last two nuts. It's gonna hold our brake pedal and linkage on and we're gonna be ready for a ride. We also added a nice chain guard there. You'll never guess where it's from. Good to go? Yeah, I hope so. Ike's about to go on the maiden voyage. The engine we built from just pieces and we got it running in the last video. 
uh, but we haven't actually run it on a project yet. We don't know how powerful it's going to be. Uh oh, fuel leak already. Yeah. Where? I use a fuel line that's perfect for the fuel tank, but too large for the carburetor. pretty quick really but we got to work on that break okay sounds good yeah it actually started accelerating pretty fast i thought it was going to be uh do a wheelie no way dude yeah. hey that's not bad man yeah got to work on that break yeah all right sounds good right. bring her in Are you trying to die? Yeah. Oh, dude, it, it actually feels, it, it feels like, I must, it feels like a built predator. Really? Yeah. Before the brake started doing its thing, it was starting to accelerate pretty hard. I come out of it. Yeah. That's and cool, dude. And then I dude. started having the brake problems. Yeah. Well, it's just too late, man. We, we got to yeah. pick this up another day. So in this video, we took a vintage stiff chassis mini bike. We restored it and we put our high performance Briggs & Stratton five horsepower engine on it. I think it looks really, really good. Another day when we have some daylight, uh, we're gonna take it out for a ride and Ike seems to think it's gonna perform really well. I wanna see what a built Predator will do up against a built Briggs & Stratton like we have here. Anyway, leave us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video today, guys, and subscribe if you wanna see more awesome content from us. Of course, if you wanna check out any of the parts from gopowersports.com, check them out at the link in our description and use our discount code CC10 for 10% off most parts on their website. See what we're up to in between videos on Facebook and Instagram at Cars and Cameras Reviews. Check me out at Isaac, it'll be fine. And if you want to help support us in what we do, pick up a hoodie, sticker, hat, or t-shirt at cars-cameras.com. Let us know what you think of the Nostalgia Minibike. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.